What's up, Cody? What's up, man? How are you doing? What do we have here? <laughs> so this is my 1982 Nissan 240SX with an LS under the hood. It's an LQ4 iron block. It's got just a little baby cam, some uh, like rocker arm upgrades, push rod, Kamali push rods, and that's about it. But it's pretty stock. Front mount radiator still. Uh, we have a rear mount oil cooler that holds about three quarts so that we can get 12 quarts oil in the engine. Keep it cool. We don't ever get above like 200 degrees on our coolant and our oil stays at like 140. What kind of LX did you say it is? So it's an LQ4 out of like a 2500 uh, Silverado from 2006, or like a Denali, like the towing motors. Oh, okay. so they're pretty like obtainable? Yeah, they're definitely obtainable. Um, they're really popular for boost because you can just throw tons of boost at them and they don't really care. Um, I don't have any boost on it, but we can hit rev limiter, sit on it, doesn't really matter. What transmission do you have? I have a T56 Magnum F style, uh, so that I don't have to have any adjusters to make the shifter sit in the stock placement. Uh, it's the only thing on the car that I bought that's like new. I mean, I have like wide stab and coilovers, but engine is from a junkyard. Uh, fuel cell is, is new too, but the transmission was the one thing I didn't want to rebuild myself because mm -hmm. I hate doing that. Is that transmission, does it bolt right up? Or? Yeah, so it's a stock LS transmission. Um, the Magnum just means that it's built a little bit better. It's rated for like 750 foot pounds of torque, I think. Hello, 750? 750 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. We make like 400 horsepower, so it, it doesn't care at all. Right. Like everything on the car was built so that if I do make more power later on, it uh, it can handle it and not be like, oh, now I need to upgrade all these other things. Um, oh, yeah. We also have uh, yellow speed coilovers in the front with y spap attached to it, which is super, super nice. We have one way yellow speed in the front, and then we have two ways in the rear so that we can dial in a little bit more adjustments with our compression and our rebound. Do you like those yellow speed coilovers, like the way they tool? Yeah, they're super nice. They have a really good feeling. Adjusting them uh, is super nice. And I like that the dials on the bottom, because I always worried like I'm gonna adjust them. So there's no dials up here. They're on the bottom of the coil. So like nobody could actually nudge one and then one side feels weirder than the yeah. other. I've never seen that before with the dial on the bottom. Yeah. And another thing too is uh, one of my buddies spun in front of me and I hit him and my entire top half was like here and my coilover and my wise fab kit was totally fine because it's an inverted shock. So there's no, like it's really uh, stiff up here, really strong. Okay. Yeah, dude, I remember that seeing your car after the wrecking. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. That was a pretty good one. But I mean, there's tons of eBay parts in here, like in this catch can. That's a Racetronics um, fuel pressure regulator. Keep uh, Amazon uh, coolant overflow. And all my lines are just off Amazon. It's called Evil Energy. Um, you know, you don't need the best stuff. You see it to work. All the lines are PTFE lines, but you can get 20 feet and fittings for like a hundred bucks. And so when you have, you know, over a hundred feet of lines and fittings, over 200 fittings on the car, it, it adds up quickly. What, what ton of lines did you say they were? They're AN lines and they're PTFE line. Okay. So they're a little bit stronger. They have like the coating so that your oil or your coolant isn't eating through the line. What does that mean, PTF? PTFE. PTFE? Yeah. What does that mean? It means, it's like a real scientific thing. I don't want to, I don't know. It, I know, I used to know what it means, but it's like a, it's like a plastic coating that's inside of the tube. So you have the outside braided and then the rubber and then the metal that's in the rubber. And then on the inside is like a plastic coating and that's the PTFE coating. I've never heard of that. I've heard of like AM mining split, yeah. not of the PTL. If, if you run ethanol, you have to have PTFE. So it's easy enough to just run everything. And now I only need certain fittings. I don't need different fittings for every type of thing I'm doing. And those uh, PTF lines, those are like just for the coolant and fuel? Uh, I use them for everything just because it's easier to get everything the same. That way all the fittings are transferable. But like for your coolant, you don't really need it. Um, but for your oil, it's better to have it. Like I have it on my power steering because uh, I blew a regular AM line once. Like I drew, I blew a little pinhole, but I was losing oil pressure. I didn't know why. And there was like the smallest little pinhole like right here. So now it's AM line and no more issues. Okay. What what line did you have on that, the bolt? Uh, just AM regular. So it's just a rubber coating. Which one do you prefer? Like those PTFE or the Yeah, the PTFE, it's rated for a lot more pressure too, mm -hmm. which is super nice. So there's no worrying about like, am I going to blow a line? Yeah. Hell yeah. And you said you had a wise fob on it also? Yeah, so we have a wise fob front kit. There we go. So we have full wise fob front, 
uh, lower control arm, upper arm, top hat, everything like that. And then we have the V2 kit with the rack relocation. So the rack's pulled forward, I think it's about two inches. So we can get a little bit more angle and we don't need an offset spacer. Do you have their full um, angle kit? Full watch. angle kit. And then I have their full rear grip kit too. Oh, yeah. So that we can dial in like uh, our dynamic toe so that as we squat, because this car squats a lot, mm -hmm. like I would say at least an inch and a half to two inches. Um, Is that like a normal thing at T40 stem to squat or? Uh, I like the way it feels. I like to have it like softer so that when you're mm -hmm. putting it in angle, it's squatting and then you can adjust your rebound so that it stays squatted. So like if you're lifting off throttle a little bit, you're not gonna be like bouncing up and down every time. You can just set it and it'll stay in it. Even when you're like letting off throttle a little bit, it'll hold it for you. So, but yeah, the squat is nice because we can gain toe. Uh, that's really cool though. Um, you said like we are on throttle squats and stays yeah. there? Yeah, so it'll stay there and we won't have like at a uh, hot hit at round one or no round two coming off the bank. We were kind of bouncing when we hit come off the uh, the bank into the flat part. They're bouncing a little bit, so we were able to like tighten it up a little bit. With I think it was the rebound, or might have been compression. I still don't fully understand it, but we were able to tighten it up a little bit so that we had way less like way bouncing. It was kind of like it went down and then it kind of stayed and it slowly went back up to where it wanted to be. Yeah, dude, suspension kind of messes my head sometimes. Yeah. Like you see, it's super simple, but you could really dial it in, like make a lot of adjustments. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of adjustments. Yeah. I don't even do half the adjustments like i just kind of set it and i mess with tire pressure um so that you know if i want all the grip like we make about three three eighths of grip or three eighths of toe in uh normal and then as we squat the full squat we'll gain another three eighths oh, and for so, the rear okay. for the rear and then we run the like, toe out in the front um and we also have a little bit of positive chamber in the back so that as we squat we're gaining full tire wear and our tires wear super evenly so it uh, it's definitely pretty good. It's a pretty good setup. Having to adjust things constantly, it's just you're just chasing, chasing like the perfect setup. With this, I just adjust tire pressure, and if I want grip, I have full grip, and if I want less grip, I'll just air up the tires and let it slide a little more. How long has he had it set up like good with the suspension? Uh, the start of this year. So at this Christmas, um, I upgraded from GK Tech to Wide Fab in the front, and then I had stock stuff in the rear, and all the bushings were shot tried to push out uh, the bushings to put in poly, poly bushings or solid bushings. After taking 24 hours to push out one bushing and there's like 12, I was like, nope, bought a, bought a rear grip kit. <laughs> was that the self-setting bushing? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. No, on the lower control arm, it's like a triangle. And in the front where it attaches to the knuckle and then on the, where it attaches to the subframe, there's bushings. And it's kind of like a hard rubber on the outside and then a little bit of a softer rubber on the inside so that you have a little bit of play and you have to heat them or cut them and push them out. And it's such a nightmare. You would not recommend it to any on an older car. <laughs> I know this could be a real pain sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to show off the Indy? Like the angle? Uh, but see, I don't even have that much angle because I don't make enough power to like use it all. We can get more angle out of it, but like I've never really needed any more. Mm -hmm. And any more, it gets kind of dicey with the amount of power that I make. So well, it works good. Took yeah. the front bumper off because it just flies off all the time and I just cracked my the other side fender and like ripped all the bolts out. So we're going no bumper today. That livery looks good though. Thank you very much. I yeah. my dad helped me design it and then we have a vinyl cutter. So the whole car is actually wrapped green, if people don't know. And then the pink is I guess you peel it, you can feel there's two pieces there. So the pink I wrapped over it because I don't have like a printer or anything like that. And it's pretty expensive to get your car um printed or wrapped yourself so i do it all myself how long did i take huh. uh, this time it took a little bit longer because the car was pink and green last year and so i had to unwrap the car which takes almost longer than wrapping the car yeah um and then last year i cracked my origin lap fenders so these are some replicas and they came i thought they were ready for wrap but they were like they have like some kind of coating on them so in here, it's basically just like falling. It won't stick to the to the fine fender glass, fiberglass. <laughs> it looks good though. I like the color combo. Thank you very much. Oh. And people ask me if I copied Rome, but I had this planned out before Rome announced his, and then he put his out, and I like just finished driving my car, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> you guys should be on like the same team or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully one day when I get to Rome's level, but it's, it is nice to you know match or something like that. Yeah. 
How about your wheel and tire combo? So we run circuit performance rims. Um, I've been using them. They are a sponsor of mine now, but I used to buy their rims. Um, I used to buy them like 10 at a time and they gave me a little bit of a discount. And then, you know, after buying rims from them for four years, every year I tried to switch up my rims. So I'd buy 10 at a time or 12. And then I was like, hey, you know, they gave me 10% and then a little bit more. And now, you know, they're, they're a partner of ours. So I, I love running them. They're, you know, maybe heavier than like regular rims, but they're super nice. They're really sturdy and they're cheap, which is nice too. So when you're buying 12 rims in a year, if not more, like, yeah. you know, they, they work really well. And they're coming out with a spun forge rim that I have in my booth right now. And it's like 19 pounds, it's like lighter than gram lights. They're super, super sick. They have a six spoke design there. I'm super excited for them. Yeah, I can't wait to see those on your collar. Yeah. They look yeah. so good. They're gonna be awesome. Um, and then we have them wrapped in Delinos. We ran a couple different tire brands last year and we had problems with delaminations and chunking, getting two laps out of a tire, getting four laps out of a tire. And when you're paying, you know, upwards of hundred bucks a tire, it's a bummer when that happens. When you're not making a ton of horsepower, someone like, you know, John Schaefer who makes 700, any tire he runs, he's gonna get two laps out of it. We don't have that much power. So that was a bummer. We switched to Bellinos this year and at Hot Pit, we're using like one set of tires for 12 laps. Wow. 12 laps, third gear, pretty much sitting on the bank, not on limiter, but pretty high in the RPM, uh, like 90 miles an hour wheel speed. So what have you done to the interior? So we gutted everything and then I had to ditch weld like the entire car because S chassis are notoriously pretty flimsy. So all the parts where the panels meet, we had to stitch weld it. And then we built this cage in my dad's garage. I bought a bender and a welder, learned how to weld, figured out how to bend it. And this is a lot cheaper than hiring someone. Uh, we had to cut the uh, trans tunnel to fit the bell housing for the T56 to the LS. Um, I think that's it for like the welding part. Everything else is pretty so the uh, whole cage is all done by you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we designed it. We designed these door bars um, to get like as much comfortability as we could. So that when you're in the car, you're not like hitting the cage. Yeah. Um, we tucked it really, really high. So it's actually welded to the uh, car, like in a bunch of spots. We have dimple dies with gussets on the front, but we didn't really need them. Um, and then the cage is actually welded like up in here too. And this is like up to par with like Formula Fifth. Yeah, so it's a pro spec uh, cage, which I think qualifies for uh, pro one or and pro spec two, um, or pro am cage is what it is, and it should be the same as that. Uh, some of the dude two bars like kind of right here, but I have a hard enough time getting in the car as it is, so I didn't want to do that. But we have some super nice status seats that I bought myself. I think it was two uh, two years ago for my birthday. I really really wanted a nice seat and. I got them all customized, super good, with the green stitching. The car was supposed to just be green and then the drips was like a, at the last minute I, I wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz to it. So we added the drip. So no pink on the seat, but we have the pink Prisma harnesses, which are super nice. It's a three, two, cause we run a Hans hybrid. So it fits, you know, inside of the hybrid so notches. Uh, what is that a Hans hybrid? A Hans hybrid. So a Hans device is the like cowboy collar that you'll see people see. So a hybrid is something that you strap onto your body and it's the, the cow, the collar part of it is attached to me and the other style, like a Han style is attached to the helmet. And then when you put your harness over it, it like kind of attaches to your body. So your neck can't whip around. So it's kind of like a neck race. Yeah. Basically a neck race. Okay. Yeah. What the hybrid is attached to you instead of being attached to the helmet. And then you, you attach both of them to the helmet, but it's kind of separately. So, and you said these seatbelts attached to that? The Hans uh, hybrid. So they'll go over uh, this part of it. We'll go over the top of the Hans to pull the Hans onto my body to keep it keep me kind of strapped in. Yeah, it's safety first, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially at Opit with like the bank. Um, last year, Shelly Hansen went and like she hit her back end a little bit too hard and then like flung around and she had a Hans on. Luckily, that was a pretty hard wreck. So yeah. um, we have these little floor plates that I made dimple died just to get my foot a little bit higher off the ground. I need to add some grip tape to them because my feet slide around, but that works. Is this a common thing with the plates, the floor plates? Yeah. Yeah. Cause the floor plates are usually like real bumpy. 
So people make this so it's a nice flat surface for your foot. So when you're going like left foot braking or gas to brake to clutch, whatever, your foot can just kind of move around on a flat surface. And the grip tape keeps it from you slipping. So a little bit of grip while also wanting to be able to move your foot vertically without hitting like a notch or horizontally without hitting a notch. Um, we gutted the doors as much as we could. I tried to cut these out as you can see, but it's a huge pain. So left those in there. Do you, did you do that to make room for the roll cage? Yeah. Yeah, because I wanted as much room as possible, and I mm. thought I could take these out when I made this, and then clearly it was a lot harder than it actually was. It seemed it was a lot harder than it looked, so. Well, you, you made it work. It, it was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these cover up all the dings to the cage. Um, NRG Race Hub, because I run a deep dish wheel, because it looks really, really cool. That's kind of the only reason. But uh, with the old style hub, the wheel was kind of close to me so with the race hub we were able to get the wheel two inches farther away which kind of made it more comfortable to where i liked it because when it's like this everything is really close together so if i'm on the wheel i go to the handbrake it's right there change gears it's right there everything's like kind of in line so that nothing's too far away from each other yeah i like that suede on there it's nice. yeah and this is my parky brake that everybody always loves. So it keeps the car from rolling. Is that a Sicky handbrake? Yeah, Sicky handbrake, and it's a pull style with the tube right here. So it's a uh, remote bell uh, reservoir. Super nice. Uh, I have a fire extinguisher back here. If you look, I have a fire state or a lifeline fire suppression system that's not wired to anything because I haven't got to it yet. But I have the fire extinguisher on my feet, so that's good. So that fire suppression system, where do you plan on routing it? Uh, so you have to run a line to the fuel cell, a line to the driver, and then two lines to the fuel rails. We have two fuel rails, so two lines. And then there'll be a little pull thing right here, so that when you, if you are on fire, you pull that. It'll help you out. Uh, Ter Holly Terminator X is our ECU. Uh, I have no tune on the car. It just runs off of whatever the Terminator says is the good a AFR. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't idle great, but I don't really need it to idle great. I just need it to sit on rev limiter pretty well, and it definitely does that. Did Holly, or did you download the base tune from Holly? Or? It's on the Terminator, so oh. you, when you buy the Terminator, you pick if you have a 24 or a 58 uh, reluctor wheel, and then you pick like what gen, which is, this is a gen three. You pick a couple other things, and then it has tunes loaded into it, and then you pick what size cam you have, and I have a tiny cam, so we pick the smallest spec, and then what size injectors you run. And if you get Holly, um, Holly like certified injectors, which are, we run A-Cell, then it already has them in there with like all of the features of that fuel injector and how much fuel it'll push and everything like that, so. Has that tune been tuning pretty well? Yeah, it works. Um, everybody says we'll get another like 50 to 70 horsepower if we actually tune it which I'd love to do, but you know, every every penny has to go somewhere and uh, a tune when the car already runs is hard to justify like a thousand bucks. So yeah, unless you, now. like unless you do some upgrades or something then. Yeah, yeah, I want to run ethanol, which mm -hmm. we need to have a tune to run that. We run, like I was saying, the PTFE lines, all my fuel lines are PTFE. The fuel filter is a stainless steel style filter, mm -hmm. which you have to run uh, for ethanol or you can run another kind, but you need to replace it often. Stainless steel, the ethanol won't eat away the filter. So those PTFE lines, those are already ready for um, ethanol? Yeah. And then underneath the car, we have an ethanol content sensor, uh, which is in the line, ready to go. It's just not doing anything right now. It's reading gasoline. At least you have it ready. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like I was saying earlier, I built the car for what I want it to be. Um, but for now, it's kind of what it is. Uh, what else is in the car? I think that's it. Little kill switch box that I made. Oh, that's cool. So the key's under there, uh, and then it goes up to, so when you turn it, we have a little thing up here. And that's just for the ignition? Yeah, so when you, uh, that's like the kill switch for the battery. Oh. So that when you pull this thing in case I roll over or something, it turns the key off down there, which is pretty common, like safety stuff that you have to have for drifting or for competing. Oh, um, uh, we have my helmet. Probably the best part about the car. Uh, Brandon Zook painted it for me. We got cats all over, cats and sharks, Ken Block, rainbow print with my drips, my logo, 
And the best part of it is top of it. Dude, I love that helmet. It's so good. People, people always love it. I'm like, oh, have you seen the top? And they're like, oh my God, it just got so much better. <laughs> so he's a super cool designer. He, I sent him my car. He asked me like, you know, oh, do you like anything else to go into the, into the helmet? And I was like, I kind of just like animals. He said, what are your favorite animals? I said, Captain Shark. He said, dude, I got you. And then he sent me this. I said, this is pretty rad. What did you, you say his name was? Zook Design? Uh, yeah, Brandon Zook. So it's Zook Design Co. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, he does really good. Yeah, he's on my Instagram, so I would definitely check him out. He's a super cool guy. Um, he's actually doing a Memorial Day sale right now. So I don't know when, when day he's going to post this video, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely hit him up because this was like such a thing that, you know, I thought would be really cool, but obviously could never afford. And then with talking with him and his pricing was, was pretty decent. So. I love it and it's a good attention grabber. Definitely. Um, in the rear, like I was saying, we have the rear grip kit, new performance fuel cell, which I love. Um, a lot of guys run different stuff out here, but this was a really, really well priced fuel cell with their competition fuel cell unit. So <laughs> on this little unit right here, we have three fuel pumps in total. We have, or no, I actually only run two. We have a third one in there for emergencies. So I have a lift pump that sits all the way at the bottom and that is a DW300 and it pumps into a canister that's attached to this and it goes to like here and it pumps fuel into there. And then we have a DW400 that feeds the engine that goes up all the way to the front, runs through the fuel lines and then all the way back so that we never have fuel starvation. It's full of foam. Um, and the main reason for the surge tank uh, or for the CFC unit is because if you don't have a CFC unit, you need a surge tank somewhere, which pumps fuel all the way to the front of the engine, and it kind of stores it up there so that if you're in drift or if you're pulling Gs and the fuel is not going towards the pump, it's in this little thing that it can pull fuel from. Um, but it, all that's stored in here, and we're always pumping fuel back and forth. And uh, how much fuel does this hold? This is a 10 gallon tank, so it's it's pretty small. I think it's pretty average for drifting. Some guys run like a five or an eight. Um, but we wanted to get as much weight as we could above the axles. Uh, is this directly above the axle? It's or? pretty close. So the axles are right where this bar goes across. Because of that bar, which I did before I got the fuel cell, couldn't do it. So it's actually attached to the bar with the, the cages attached to the bars. So it's as close as I can get it. But a lot of guys think that you want fuel behind the, the rear axles so that your weight's all the way to the back. But as close to above the axles as you can get it is the better. So it's actually pushing down on the car yeah. and not like pulling down on the car. It's not when you're transferring weight, it's not like swinging. It's like with everything. So. Yeah. I don't know too much about weight distribution, but I think it would be better like right above the axle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we do have, this is a Durale. I think it's a 19 row uh, oil cooler that we pump from the front with a uh, Melling uh, high low, not high volume, high flow oil pump with a Copo Camaro spring. So pumps it all the way back here to our fuel or to our oil filter. We have a gauge on it so that we can always make sure that, you know, we have redundant gauges kind of everywhere. Goes into the cooler, which we have a temp sensor out of the cooler, which we have another temp sensor. So we can make sure that that's working Two fans that are massive. Uh, we can cool down inside to outside it'll cool at least 20 degrees um so usually we'll have like 160 to 180 going in and like 120 coming out going back to the engine at 120 so and is this like can you give this off the shelf yeah this is just a totally off the shelf thing it comes with dash i think it's dash 10 fittings on the left and the right and we run dash 10 over the front so i've never heard of that company Durale. yeah it's pretty popular uh they do like you know all types of cooling like radios and stuff like that um it is a little bit pricey because it's really, really good. But like, if, I don't know if you can see, but it's thick. It's like four inches thick. Is so this it, like a universal, like, oh yeah. yeah, you can use it on magazine? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Cool. So that works really well. Optima battery, which is super, super rad. It If it goes all the way to zero charge, it'll charge back up. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. It also weighs like 50 pounds. So it helps get some of the weight back here. Oh, wow. Cause I don't have any kind of like, I've never even weighed the car. So I just, know that there's some weight back here helping to keep some weight over the rear yeah. um but what else oh most important thing if you have an ls engine is we have an accu sump down here which you can see the gauge right here again redundant gauges just oh, wow. so that you know 
that whatever you're reading is actually doing what it's doing. Um, AccuSump is the most important thing for an LS because you'll get fuel or you'll get oil starvation in drift where the oil will go to one side of the pan, especially if you have a 240 because you have to run a front mount pan. You can run all the baffles that you want, but if you're in drift for more than, you know, a couple seconds and your oil's up against the wall, you're going to have zero oil pressure all of a sudden, you're going to have detonation. So the AccuSump will kind of cover you for, they say like 30 seconds, which is a long, long time to be in one corner of a drift. Uh, but we have a little switch that we have up on our toggle. So it's also really great because if you, when you start your engine, there's always maybe one to two seconds where you have no oil pressure. So anytime that we start the car, we turn the ignition on and then the fuel. And then once my screen comes up, I'll turn my AccuSum on and it'll open and it'll just kind of flood the uh, engine full of oil so that we have pre-lubricated Engine, engine components. That's good. Just make it last that much longer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, do people run AccuSumps on different engines? Because I yeah. know it's really common on LS. You know, like the yeah, it's really, really common on LSs because of the oil starvation issue that LSs are really known to have. People run them on all kinds of motors. Um, the other option would be to go to a, uh, a dry sump. But that's like, this is like a $200 fix. The overall, with the lines and everything, it's like maybe a four or $500 fix. But a dry sum is like a several thousand dollar fix. And then you have another cog on the front with another gear and another belt that could go wrong. And um, like Taylor Ray and those guys have had the belt slip and then you have no oil pressure. And so that's, you know, way worse. This is pretty simple to where it's like hard for it to go wrong. And they're pretty easy to put in too. The plumbing is kind of weird, but if you uh, read their diagram or you talk to them, like Canton's really well, Canton's really good at like explaining things to you because i never done any of this before when i did all that <laughs> like yeah. my experience before building this car was i put a cat back exhaust on my subaru brz that i used to own and then i built this car no way like yeah that's the only experience you had before yeah Jeez, that's crazy yeah a lot of youtube videos you got to a lot of progress from just installing a cat back yeah well, yeah i had i had that car and i put a cat back on i did put headers on too but my dad helped me a lot on that and he, he did a lot of it. Um, but then we jumped jumped into this monster. Ew. So YouTube is a great, great resource. Definitely. You can figure out anything. Like if you want to build an LS car, Taylor Ray has like two really, really, really well-documented drift series that I watched probably 10 times. And then the great thing about LS is, is they use it for off-roading. The off-road dudes here use it. They use it for drag racing. They use it for everything. So. If you don't if you don't know what you're doing you don't have to stick with just drifting you can watch any kind of other video and they'll show you how to build it show you what you need show you what you don't need and yeah. kind of go from there uh dude yeah. i think the most impressive part is like the fact that you did the whole cage by yourself <laughs> yeah like that's not easy man. yeah yeah that was uh that was very stressful yeah. um luckily i'm pretty good with like math and my dad's like really really smart guy so we were able to figure it out together the hardest part was actually like i'm a very picky and tedious person so like the two door bars on each side of the car are perfectly perfectly identical no nobody would ever know that <laughs> like we did it uh we did this side first the driver's side first we did the passenger side and it was like half of an inch uh lower than the other one and i was like nope like we gotta redo it and he was like nobody's ever gonna know and i but i was said nope we gotta redo it that's so. good though i mean Cause then you'll do that with everything you work on. Yeah, it's it's very good. It's bad, but um, they I mean the cage looks great. People always compliment it. Um, That's cool. But yeah, and then in the rears, these are the two ways yellow speed coilovers that we have, which are super nice. Um, this is a little mini panel that we have for our fuel pumps. So we have power coming in. And then we have fuel pump one, fuel pump two. Uh, this is my backup camera that I use for my towing. No way, you have a backup camera? Yeah, it's for towing though. So oh. it hooks up so that when I'm towing, I can see like behind my trailer. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then, by the way, the other pump that's in here is another 400 in case that one goes out. So we would just take this red wire right here and put it onto this one. And then we'd have another fuel pump. It's just ready to go? It's just ready to go. And he said these fuses were for the all for the fuel. Yeah, it says bilge pump because that's what they sent me. But yeah, so in case the fuel pump, one of the fuel pumps goes out, 
Um, there's a little light right there too in the middle. It's pretty beat up, so it'll tell me if something's wrong. We used to have tire sprayers back here to cool down the tires, but we just keep two tires now, so it doesn't really matter. You don't think you'd ever install it in a C fleet? Uh, no, some series they don't even let you run it, so oh, it's kind of. I don't know. I don't know if it's for. You're not. You're just not allowed to in some of the series. Like I don't think Hoppit lets you run tire sprayers. I thought it was common, especially in like competition. Not in competition. So oh. you can't really do it in competitions. Like in pro or pro spec, you can't do it. Pro am, you can't do it. Oh, cool. Which pro am or pro spec is the goal. So cars kind of set up for for pro spec. Oh, they have these square tubings that I welded in because I cut out the um, spare tire. Uh, the whole back is cut out, but that's where the spare tire was. We have bash bar, which is kind of some thinner metal, which I have hit several times on the <laughs> bank at hop hit. Do you think you shaved a lot of weight off this card? From I don't know. My some some people like my dad and some other people think that we have because we gutted it, you know. But like all the cage weight, the motor is a hundred pounds heavier than a KA. Um, you know, the fuel cell itself weighs more than the gas can the ODM gas tank. I don't know, it might be like a couple, like a hundred pounds lighter, but I don't think we like shaved a ton of weight. I definitely would like to weigh the car one day. Weigh the car, tune the car, do like, you know, big boy things that people do. I wonder what the weight distribution is like. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of worried to find out. Oh, this is where I hit the wall last time. We'll hit this tail light. Oh yeah, it's still in there. <laughs> uh, but we have dual calipers. We have tiny baby, little baby Willwood calipers in there. OEM calipers over here. Um, you can kind of see the yellow speed coilover in there. Uh, yeah, you can see the yellow speed coilovers up to the side. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's mainly it for the car. The firewall is like three pieces that I just kind of put some cardboard in there and it fits. Uh, I have this little thing back here that I was hoping I could see out of. I really can't see out of at all. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I would recommend would be like a KBD body kit. I have, I never ever have this bumper stay on the car. Like every time I hit a cone or something, it just flies off. It is held on with zip ties, but you know, this, I've had this bumper drag the entire track of ABS. Like I went off in the very first entry and then finished the track and the bumper was just like dragging like this. <laughs> That's where this hole came from. Um, Dude, I don't but know I mean, a lot of companies that make like body kits, but I feel like KBD is definitely one of the strongest. Yeah, it's so, like, it's very... super good. The wing is also KBD. Oh, the... they make wings too? Yep. Oh. Yeah, there's a KBD wing. Oh. Um, it's super light and it's like a nice little duck bill. I want a big giant wing. Um, like a chassis wall? Yeah, like a chassis mount wing. Oh. But uh, it kind of doesn't really flow well with the car. Some of the cars look good with it. Some cars don't. I think this car doesn't look as good as some other cars, but this one looks really good. It's a little duck bill, but it's kind of... Maybe just get like a more aggressive... A little pizzazz, yeah. yeah. It looks good. Thank you. Oh, um, cool. <laughs> but yeah, we have 75 millimeter fenders in the rear, 50 millimeters in the front, uh, a little bit of camber in the front so that when we're at angle, we're riding true. Who makes those fenders? Origin Lab. Origin Lab? Yes. Do any other companies make fenders for 240? People make rep ones. Uh-huh. Um, Cause that's all I hear, like. But Origin Lab, yeah. Yeah. KBD just came out with some front vendors, mm -hmm. um, but they came out with them after I already bought like four pairs of those. So, mm -hmm. for now, I have these, and I just fix them myself with some fiberglass if I do wreck them. Yeah, these ones are like super popular. The yeah. the Origins, I yeah. see everyone. I don't know. Yeah, they're really, really popular, yeah. and luckily for me, like a lot of people end up getting rid of the pop-up headlights. So these are more readily available. People will go with like the S14 front end or an S15 front end. So these aren't as commonly used nowadays. Those are more headlights for you. <laughs> exactly. You just stock up on some, yeah. some pop-up lights. Yeah. The The next upgrade is probably going to be like the hood, getting a fiberglass hood. Cause that hood weighs like, I want to say at least 50 pounds. Oh wow. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so like when we prop it up or something, like it'd be nice to just be able to pull it off. Like a lot of guys just clasp it in the front. And then, you know, it's never going to fly backwards. And then that way you can just pull it right off for so you to inspect the engine and you don't have to get a hood prop or something. When those guys, um, do they put hood pins on the, yeah. where the hinges would be? So it just pops off? Or? Uh, not where the hood, like just basically where my hood pins are, like in the very oh. front. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm super happy with all the partners that we have for this year. Um, everyone's really like helping out a lot. 
Um, driving at Hot Pit is a lot, it's taxing. So it's nice to have like my girlfriend is super, super supportive and my dad who work on my crew. Uh, my brother comes out and then my buddy David comes out. Danny is now my media guy now that he has a media pass for Hot Pit. <laughs> I know. So, you know, we're all like kind of learning together, which is nice because I think you're pretty new to like going to Hot Pit. Yeah. In my first season, everyone in my crew's first season. So we're all kind of like getting better together, which is cool. Um, you know, we're all bringing each other up, but. Yeah, dude, you got a bunch of new sponsors now. Yeah. Like people supporting. Yeah, we have Prime this year too, which is super cool. Prime drinks. Um, they came out into round, one, uh, round two and supplied drinks for like everybody, which was super rad. They had two people come and hand out drinks and everybody was super excited about it. We have a couple leftovers, so we brought them today and gave them out to people. Um, oh, but yeah, just people keep helping us out and it's really, really awesome. Oh yeah, dude. That's good to hear, man. I really appreciate you showing us the car. Yeah, stuff. of course, dude. And if anybody ever like wants to get into drifting or anything like that and you see us at the track and you have questions or you want to sit in the car, like people always are super excited to sit in the car. Like I sit in a race seat and you know, all this stuff every day. So it's, it's not cool anymore. It's still fun, but it's like, you know, some people hear like, oh, you know, can I open the door? I'm like, dude, sit and start the car, like rev the car. I want people to get super excited about it. And I want people to, to want to come watch drifting because it's, it's getting more popular, but it's not like other sports. So um, if you ever see us stop by, say hi, we always have stickers or stuff or take pictures or just ask questions about getting into drifting um, or okay. hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions like that. Hold on. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Of course, man. Thank you.